What's up, guys? Sanjay Shanoi from Team Pixel Track, and I'm really excited to have Larry Kim with us. Larry, thanks a lot for joining us. Larry is the CEO of Mobile Monkey, and I'm pretty sure you must have seen him, heard about him when he used to work for WordStream. Uh, he built this uh, PPC management software, WordStream, and now he's exited and now building on Mobile Monkey. I will let Larry talk about it. Larry, why don't you tell us a little bit about WordStream, a lot about uh, Mobile Monkey, and your journey so far? Hey, uh, thanks for having me today, and thanks for, for joining us. Uh, really great to be here. Um, you know, look, I'm, I'm like a lot of you guys. I'm, I'm a, I started out as a digital marketer, um, just doing uh, you know online advertising and, and SEO and content marketing. Um, I, I really, really uh, love love marketing. It's 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 just um, I love you know finding out how these algorithms work and and, and finding all the loopholes and 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 then coming up with new growth ideas and um, and, and basically uh, I, I started a business uh, in my twenties. Um, it was a, a consulting company, like a lot of I'm sure a lot of consulting agencies are uh, listening today. Uh, and, and basically. Um, after it was, it was just like a one-man show. It was just myself, uh, and uh, you know, then I got the idea of maybe writing some software to automate the work that I was doing. Okay, so that was just a way to to you know avoid doing stupid repetitive tasks all the time. Uh, and 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 later the idea went off to to maybe sell that software instead of selling services. Um, so my, my background's in electrical engineering, so, the, so I was I was just building it myself. Uh, and, and basically, uh, that was how, how I got started. And, and um, it's, it's been a really incredible journey for the last 10 years, building you know, the world's largest pay-per-click advertising software company, managing over a billion dollars of ad spend for tens of thousands of customers worldwide. So roughly 2% of Google's total worldwide ad advertising revenue is, is, is managed by WordStream. Um, and and um, it's just been a, a, a really fun learning experience to learn about how to build companies and how to build great products and customer service organizations and sales organizations. So happy to talk to you about, you know, any, anything you want to, <laughs> anything yeah, you're hearing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first thing is that it so happens that I've observed this trend that most agency owners or consultants, uh, they try to build a product because they want to get away from the service and build a product and sell the product itself. Is that the kind of motivation you had to? Um, so keep in mind, my my background is in software engineering, and so uh, um, I would say it was a little different. It was that you know ever since I studied electrical engineering and software, like I always wanted to have a software company. I just didn't know what the uh, the product would be. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then later, and later I found out about marketing, uh, and then and then I thought, okay, well I can make, I can build a marketing software. So I think um, you know. It, it's a lot of agency owners like build like WordPress plugins and, 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 and different products. And I think that's great. Um, uh, you know, it, it just helps that, that I've been, I, you know, prior to marketing, I was, I was just writing software for about five, five six years. Yeah. Amazing. So I, I clearly remember about, I don't know, eight, nine years ago when I started off in, in digital marketing, I remember using WordStream and if I'm not wrong, it was more of a keyword research tool when it started off. Right. Yeah, so, so 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 you're absolutely right. That's why the word word is, is yeah. a word stream because yeah. it was a keyword tool. Um, so, you know, like I was saying, I learned a lot and, and um, that's a kind of a euphemism. It's a nice way of saying that like I made a lot of mistakes. Okay. Uh, and and one of the big mistakes that I made early on was that the um, the market that I chose for my business, uh, keyword research, is a terrible market. It's like yeah. uh, the, the the prices are like, you know, zero dollars like there's free keyword tools everywhere you yeah. see what i'm saying yeah. uh and, and and the average customer lifetime value like sort like the churn is like you know 30 percent a month so like, wow. people That's, stay yeah like they, they stay for like three months or something so it, it was a disaster uh and so i had to pivot the company to it to a kind of a different different space and and yeah. um one of the ideas was to um you know because we had all this keyword research tool we, we, we found that a lot of people were using the keyword research to do uh both SEO and pay-per-click advertising campaigns, mm -hmm. but we, we we definitely noticed that the ones who were doing the pay-per-click advertising campaigns had more money to spend, yeah. uh, you know, and and, and were, were better customers. Um, and and so, uh, you know, I decided to move the, the company from just being a keyword research tool to being a full, you know, Google AdWords, Facebook advertising, uh, you know, display network, um, you know, kind of a 
pay-per-click advertising uh, solution. Yeah. Uh, and and um, you know, that, that allowed me to raise the prices you know, because they're spending more money here, uh, mm -hmm. providing more value, uh, and, and also uh, you know, providing uh, substantially longer customer lifetime value. Like, like they'll stay for years instead of months. So. Amazing. And I have been, I think, uh, not closely following the growth of WordStream, but I've been like, you know, it's you, you guys are everywhere at a point of time. <laughs> so uh, there's no way uh, we could have missed WordStream, but it is amazing how WordStream has grown over the years. Now, can you tell us a little bit about how you grew WordStream? Like, because it's amazing what you've done. So, <laughs> um, it's just a, a lot of, I, I was kind of just doing a lot of the marketing for, for, for WordStream. Yeah. And, and basically what I was doing was I was just blogging my, my marketing adventures. So, yeah. you know, I would be defending AdWords campaigns and I would discover loopholes and, 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 you know, best practices and, and, and crazy ideas. And I, and I would blog about them and, and um, people just thought, wow, this is like, you, 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 you'd be surprised. Most of the blogs out there are like, it's just rehashing kind of the, the same stuff. Like, you know, you have to, you know, have a good quality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most nine out of 10 results are the same quality. <laughs> uh, so they're not really adding anything new. And yeah. I think, I think a lot of the articles that I was writing were like very strange. <laughs> they're like, did you know that if, if you click these, these buttons and, and, and then you can eliminate 90% of the click fraud or something. Yeah. I, um, I remember, I remember uh, reading one of your blog posts where you did, uh, where you did this research paper on why Facebook ads is worse than Google ads. And yeah. that kind of like blew up, right? <laughs> that kind of like blew up and like it was all over the place. Can you tell a little bit about that? But, because I felt that it was awesome what you did there. So this is so funny because like everyone back in 2012, 2013, everyone knew that Facebook ads sucked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, all they had was like, they didn't have remarketing that they didn't yeah. have any, you know, it was like like ads. Remember you're, yeah. you're paying for people to like your page. There was no ROI. Yeah. Uh, every, everyone knew this. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they were going on their IPO for like a hundred billion dollar company. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the entire world was, was kind of, uh, clamoring for news about this IPO, even like your mom was like wondering like, yeah, absolutely. Hey, can I, can I get it on the iPad, yeah. Facebook IPO? You yeah. know, like every, everyone was talking about it. And so like I was the, uh, I just did a little research on, you know, comparing like the, you know, results like click through rates and, 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 uh, you know, conversion rates of, of, of Google ads versus Facebook ads. And, and really I just kind of, all I did was I just illustrated the data in an infographic and just kind of, described how bad Facebook ads were. And this was just, this is just like a, a simple blog post. It took maybe 30 minutes to do and, oh, and, wow. and uh, it, it, it wasn't a big effort. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the and, and uh, it just got picked up by over 10,000 news organizations. Like what? <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Like, I was That's not Fox. bad for 30 minutes of effort. <laughs> no, no, no. It was like on Fox business and oh, wow. I, was, I was on uh, CNN and, 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 uh, and, and, um, NPR and BBC and you know it, it, it was just it was a crazy thing because everyone was so excited about this Facebook IPO and this was like the day before the IPO I timed uh -huh. it very, very well uh, and 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 I was the only one credibly saying like I don't, I don't think this, these ads are any good <laughs> <laughs> and the IPO was like I mean the most amazing product that they had was the ad platform right and the whole IPO was based on that so yeah. Have you ever thought and wondered what that one single article might have impacted the IPO? How much? It oh, it, oh, it it absolutely did. It it, yeah. it, 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 it certainly did. Like, like, like it had it it created a up until then it was it was very bullish, and then it was kind of at the last minute. Uh, we were in creating some uncertainty. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a, a couple other big brands around the same time kind of publicly announced that they were not going to spend any money on, 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 on uh, Facebook ads like GM yeah. and, and, uh, and the articles combined the two stories, you know, saying oh. like, a, like, like a big brand is, 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 yeah. uh, is not going to advertise. And this other guy named Larry <laughs> as a study saying that they, that they asked. <laughs> oh my God. That has been like a disaster for Mark Zuckerberg, but amazing. Well, that that it, is it, like, it 
it yeah. generated like a, a million links, a, a million links to, to, to wordstream.com. Like, wow. Like, 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 <laughs> like, you know, link builders, you're trying to get like one or two links. <laughs> was, Listen up guys, you want to like have link, like talk something controversial and it's like coming your way. Well, well, what you need to do is you need to jump on a trending topic. So yeah, this was like yeah. a, a globally trending yeah. topic. Yeah. And then you need to, you need to introduce something that's backed on data because yeah. if you just, if you just create an opinion, yeah. then, then the, the reporter will steal your opinion and not and not cite you. But if it's like a you know well thought out you know yeah. data, then they'll yeah. just insert that into the coverage. Uh, and and uh, so so like basically once I learned how to do that, it, it became like. Did you do that again with Twitter? Yeah, we, we we just we just same same idea. When when Twitter went public, like two years later, we just kind of did some research comparing Facebook ads to Twitter ads, and we we said, surprise, like Twitter ads suck. <laughs> 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 uh, there's this thing called um, sh uh, like people like to take people down a, a notch. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's a yeah. human psychology. Yeah. So like if if you can play into that emotion, like like uh, you know raining on their parade or something like this like uh that that's a very strong um human emotion to tap into like like these stories yeah. that, that, that go viral are a lot of, a lot of times it's about like someone who, who who was they thought was great but turned out to be not as great as they thought they were you know um yeah. well, that's it. um so so you're you're you know same idea we we just put out the same same study but comparing twitter ads to facebook ads and it, it had a similar impact so so yeah, I, I, you know, how does it, how does this matter? I would just say that um, um, the the success of Wordstream, you know, is it's hard to to just pick one thing. There's a lot of things that have to go, but definitely um, it was a very strong at, at content marketing and and yeah. being able to do like a really link building at a at a scale that that mm -hmm. was just you know it's actually stronger than most SEO companies, absolutely. you know, uh, can compete against 1 million links. <laughs> That's like absolutely insane. I'll just give up. I think never mind. Um, so, so then, then, and then once you have the link equity, you can, yeah. you can publish, uh, you know, content and, and it, it'll yeah. just rank, it'll just rank. Like, like if yeah. you do a search for AdWords, guess what comes yeah. up? You yeah. Know, <laughs> yeah. I, I totally remember that anything to do with AdWords. I always used to like come across your article and with the orange background in your photo, like it always used to show up like always, which is amazing. <clears throat> Now, after hearing all of this, a lot of people might think that you're delusional, but you almost wear it like a badge of honor. <laughs> so let's talk about your growth principles. I love that article. I loved all your thoughts about it. I'm going to put a link below, guys, once this uh, interview is live. It's an amazing article written by Larry. He talks about the three growth principles. Um, Larry, would you want to like talk about it a little bit and like go a little deeper into it? Sure. I. Uh, after having built and, and sold a startup like WordStream, oh, by, by the way, I sold the business last year. Yeah. For, How did uh, it feel? I wanted to ask you this question. How did it feel uh, when you sold the company for $150 million? Uh, well, uh, it, it was a relief. <laughs> it was a <laughs> it was relief. A relief. Oh, that is what I was expecting. Uh, well, anyway. uh, just honestly, like a lot of these marketers, you know, yeah. you're really putting yourself out there and yeah. you're, ta you're talking about like how to, how to grow your business and how to be successful. And, you know, like you don't, you never, you haven't really achieved any success yet. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So like, yeah. uh, it would have been really embarrassing and, and humiliating if, if like after a, a decade of trying to you know teach people how to, how to grow their businesses. Like if, if, uh, if I wasn't able to realize that myself, you know, I would, I would have felt yeah. very, yeah. very, uh, uh, you know, you'd, I would have to be one of those people who talk about how not to grow a business <laughs> or, <laughs> or like mem memoirs on like, yeah, you know, my, it's, it's very big... humbling to know that you are, that thought was actually going on in your head that you're not that anything, uh, substantial for you to like go around talking about growing a business before <laughs> you actually did something like that. But let's talk about the three growth principles. The number one, you said you have to be delusional, which is amazing, which I think you're like, let the way in that the second one is finding your unicorn growth hack, which I feel is a lot uh, easier said than done. And the third one is make unicorn baby. So how about you like uh, throw some light on this? Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Right. But yeah, uh, uh, just this basically 
after having gone through this journey of a 10 year journey of, of, of starting from nothing, just a, you know, pay-per-click marketing, you know, solopreneur to, to, to selling $150 million, you know, 300 person business. Um, and, and, and um, I, I just thought there were three things that really helped me along uh, early on. Uh, it was, it was just allowing yourself to be a little bit slightly delusional in your thinking. And, and, you know, when I was working, I guess starting out, I was working out of a, out of a bakery and it, like, just because it had free Wi-Fi, it was like an internet cafe kind of thing. That was my office. Uh, and, and, and I came up with these really crazy plans of like, we're going to grow to, you know, $50 million in revenues. And, you know, we're going to grow to like, you know, hundreds of employees. And, 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 and I just, I just created these really delusional plans and, and, um, and that's, that's, really crazy because like you're just one guy working at about internet in, internet cafe you know like yeah. uh, but the reason why I did that was because I wanted to bring in others okay yeah. I, I, I needed to attract a team and it's really hard to get people to just casually join your team you know like you have yeah. to really say the dream a, a dream a vision yeah. Of, of, yeah. of of you know what we're trying to do here and and you know even if internally you're not a hundred percent sure that if, if it can be done or not, it doesn't yeah. matter. Like you, you kind of have to, uh, you know, project that, that, uh, dream as strong as you can. And I call it being slightly delusional, like, you know, not so delusional, like, 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 uh, Billy McFarlane for fire festival, that guy, like yeah. that guy was, yeah. that, was <laughs> that guy was a little too delusional, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, but like, uh, uh, but selling the dream and, 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 and making people, people want to believe in something. And, and, uh, you know, 99% of people will say that you're crazy. This is, this yeah. is ridiculous. But the 1% of people who say like, this is a really amazing, yeah. those are, those are the only people who can actually make that dream a reality. Like, because the they're, 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 they're the, the believers, they're the supporters, yeah. like the investors that will, will be able to. I think what you did with that, I think you polarized a lot of people into saying no, and you just attracted the ones who truly believed in your dream, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a filter. If, if, yeah. if, 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 if I project kind of a, a crappy little dream, then I'm going to get crappy like investors yeah. and, and crappy team people. It's, it's, yeah. it's a filter. Um, so, so, so that's how that works. Um, uh, you know, and um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a little harder because uh, like I had to pitch like 200 investors to get my first investment. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like so, you know, so, so uh, but, but the one that you get will be the right one. All right. Yeah. Uh, the, the second idea we talked a little bit about this is to find the unicorn. Like every, 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 uh, you know, company has their big break. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like for WordStream, like it was these, these ridiculous PR hits that, that generated the, uh, the millions of links. I think there's like 6 million links pointing to the site right now. Uh, you know, like it would, it, 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 it was just like, just go to like uh, majestic or something. It, it's yeah. a big number. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, uh, it was it was these crazy, um, you know, the skill of, of 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 you know, kind of um, getting your your big win. Yeah. And 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 I call that you know, uh, just finding the unicorn. Uh, you know, the, we we had a bunch of unicorns. Like we we created a um, an AdWords grader. Have you heard of this thing? It's, yes. It's a, it's a free AdWords grader. Yes. yes. Uh, and and it, it just kind of download some of your account data and tells you like, is your click through rates any good? Is your, you know, is your cost per lead any good? Um, that thing was, was used by a million businesses. It's, it's, it, it's crazy. Like, you know, like, and, and, and people, they use it every day, you know, like, yeah. it, 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 like uh, it, it sends out a free report card every month saying yeah. like, Oh, you, you improved or you, you didn't improve. Like, so you, most of the work that you do is actually useless. Like it, it, it doesn't really contribute to anything like, mm -hmm. like nine, like 90% of the work doesn't really, doesn't really result in any big outcome. Uh, but, but there's these few efforts like building that AdWords grader or working on that one PR stunt that generate like all the value. And, and so you really have to try to find that unicorn and they're hard to, f they're, they're obvious in hindsight. Like, yeah. you, you know, like, yeah, I was just going to ask you that, you know, it's, it's much easier to see it in the hindsight, but say if I were running a startup now, how do I find it right now? Well, it's going to be related to something that's doing well. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, you, you just have to analyze like 
all your marketing campaigns, like, mm -hmm. you know, like look at all your email campaigns that you ever sent out. What are the one or two that had not just a little bit better performance, but a lot better performance than, than everything else. Yeah. Okay. And then, then examine what made those, you know, by definition, like everyone has a unicorn because you know how, like when you look at your blog performance, um, there's going to be a, a, a small number of blogs that did really well and most of them go nowhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah like, absolutely. I think uh, it's 80, 20, 90, 10%, I guess. It, 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 exactly. So a few of your blog posts will have done well. Yeah. So your, your, your unicorn, you have unicorns, you have things that are doing significantly better than, than everything else. And so the idea is to find the outliers and then kind of focus on that idea and try to, um, try to understand, uh, and copy those ideas. Um, uh, you can even do this on, on your competitors. You can find their unicorn. Like what's, what's the thing that makes them so special and just, you know, make a small, Make it your own. Yeah. Yeah, make it make it your own. Uh, that actually brings me to the third growth principle, which is to to make unicorn babies. So, like once you've kind of figured out, you know, what that kind of thing is that that, that that's going to really uh, provide all the value, um, you, you have to copy it. Uh, so, like like you have to duplicate it, C clone the unicorn. So, uh, you know how I was saying like that Facebook publicity stunt, like you know did well. So we just cloned the idea uh, when, yeah. when Twitter, when Twitter went public, uh, it's, it's, it, it, they, they both worked. Uh, when, when my AdWords grader did so well, we decided that we would make the, 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 the free keyword tool, uh, you know, make that uh, free, like a free keyword tool that would generate leads and, 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 and just be a free tool as well. Like, so we just, we just copied our winning ideas. Um, you know, marketers are funny. They, they like to, think that all of their ideas are so great when in reality only a small percentage of them actually do well. Yeah. Uh, and so the, the point is that a, uh, an existing proven idea will always outperform an, a new unproven idea. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. But yet, but yet marketers tend to like to go for the new unproven idea. Yes, it's a new shiny thing that attracts them when they want to do something creative and there's something working yeah. right in front of them, right? Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's just, I don't know, they... Uh, I think they, that's they, the marketer's they, ego. You know, they want to like prove something out there. Yeah, I call it donkey denial syndrome. They are, donkey like, denial syndrome, that's a better they, one. They, like, <laughs> they, they, they think that all their ideas are unicorns. When yeah. really they're just a bunch of donkeys mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, ego is, 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 is definitely, uh, plays into it. Um, you know, they're not really thinking in terms of, uh, what they think something that's interesting to them, but you know, just because it's interesting to you doesn't mean like anyone else is going to care. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it looks like you're doing this all over again with mobile monkey. Do you want to tell a little bit about mobile monkey? What is it and what are your plans? Yeah. So like, I've had some success with building and selling WordStream, and that's I, that's my unicorn is 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 actually in, in building building companies and, and and marketing software companies. And so, uh, when you when you have success in an area, you have to clone the unicorn. You have to do it again, and 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 uh, and that's what I'm doing. I created a new business a year ago called Mobile Monkey. Uh, it's uh, the, the world's leading provider of Facebook Messenger uh, marketing solutions. We're the fastest growing uh, company in in that space right now, uh, and and uh, you know it's 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 the the messaging is the future of marketing. Like the social media is like the the era of like posting things to a wall and and, and you know like. You know, Facebook's in trouble for like live streaming, like all these like murderous rampages yeah. in New Zeal Zealand, and you know they're they're being char they're they're being accused of like you know screwing up elections and and causing terrorism and all this stuff. So so, so basically, like the era of the newsfeed is dead. It's 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 behind us, not in front of us. The future is 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 smaller, more private messaging, uh, and 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 um, businesses need to be able to figure out how to um how to communicate with their customers on these mess messaging channels facebook messenger and, and whatsapp and instagram these are important channels but also sms uh you know google apple like all these different messaging channels uh we're, we're going to need to do and i kind of see that as the future I, right now less than one or two percent of companies are doing this type of marketing whereas 89 percent of people are doing email marketing okay mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, and, and the problem with email marketing is that the open rates are like 5% and the click through rates are like 1%. And I, I don't see email making a comeback, you know, next year. I don't think it's going to jump to like 30% or, or yeah. something. It's, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Um, so, you know, messaging is, is really exciting for me because like I can get an 80% read rate and a 20% click rate in the first hour. Uh, and, and, um, and so that was really interesting. I, I want to, I want to build on the success of WordStream for everything I learned in terms of like building software and marketing software and supporting the, that software and building a brand. I want to do that with mobile monkey and, and, um, the world's you know greatest uh, chat marketing platform and and um, uh, this is uh, something really exciting I, I hope you would join me on this journey by going absolutely to absolutely and I, I I'm sure that everyone listening to this uh, interview is gonna like jump into it too but you mentioned something interesting about email marketing and chatbots like uh, right now for us as a business email marketing automation is like the holy grail for us like it is working really really well for us uh, now, that doesn't mean that I don't want to take away the beauty of chatbots, but what I want to ask you is with email marketing, I kind of own the data of my audience, but with chatbots, it's still Facebook. So in what way do you think it's going to like weigh in against uh, an email marketing automation versus chatbot automation? Look, uh, I, I I just don't see email improving anytime. Like mm -hmm. I, it's just going to, it's, it's just going to, those spam filters like the 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 clutter clutter folder in, in Outlook and the um, promotions tab in, in Gmail, they're just gonna get more and more aggressive. And even if your 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 people are opting into your messages, okay, like even if it's a hundred percent opt-in, no spamming, uh, you know, if if just a few people complain, okay, yeah, uh, then the machine learning algorithms start thinking, oh well, this must be, must be, uh, it must be promotional stuff. So they're gonna just keep moving stuff out of the inbox into the promotions tab, and then the pro promotions tab is gonna get like so so full of more stuff. You know, I, I just don't see that that improving. And and and, and you know, look, I'm I'm glad that email is is working for you, but like I don't think it's gonna improve. I I, I think it's going to deteriorate uh, and, and, and um, you know, I, the, I, like, you know, sure, uh, messaging is a, is, is a proprietary platform like uh, SMS goes through the news, goes through the telephone carriers, uh, you know, Google, iMessage, like they all go through different platform companies. But like, don't you need to be where, where the people are? Like, don't, like people, I can't even remember when the last time I sent an email to my wife was like, yeah. like dear wife, like you know, to me on a, a, a long e an email, like, like, who, like most of these, these customer communications are just like, Hey, there's a sale or, you know, there's a, there's a new product. Like this is, these are just casual informal interactions, you know, by like, by, uh, you know, people overwhelmingly prefer communicating through messaging. Um, we haven't seen this kind of a communication shift since emails overtook phone calls like 25 years ago as, as, the, yeah. as the most popular way of communicating, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so um, yeah, I get it that it, it, it's a proprietary platform, but, um, but it makes sense. What you're saying makes sense because I feel that communications is becoming more and more intimate between brands and customers, between customers and customers. And one more interesting thing you said is the era of new spaces going away and it's going to become like more close knit groups talking to each other rather than everyone talking to everyone. Or, or one on one on one channels like yeah. know, private, private messaging. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like news feeds are ridiculous. Like I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to like, 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 uh, like there, there, there's, there's like, um, maybe 5% of people who really like need to share everything about their lives and they need, they yeah. need that validation, yeah. you know, but, but like, I, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, sh share. And, and I, yeah. And I think like, it makes uh, sense to uh, jump onto the Facebook chat because I think they're going to integrate WhatsApp into it very soon. Right. And yeah, that's going to be huge. That's coming. That's uh, that's coming next year. Uh, yeah. and so, Look, um, when you have like what person doesn't have either a messenger account, a WhatsApp account, or an Instagram account? You see, I'm saying they're integrating all three. Yes. Um, and 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 it basically you have a system here that's very similar 
it's almost as ubiquitous as, as email, but, but it's just more engaging because you can do all sorts of, um, you know, like uh, buttons and navigation and uh, I can send videos and attachments and all this stuff. You can't, you, you know, emails, it's just, it's just cop, it's just texts and links. Okay. Um, uh, and, and, and um, you know, that, that's, uh, that's really exciting. I think, uh, uh, you know, one thing I learned in marketing is that you should never fall in love with a channel and, and just stick with it. Like yeah. one of the, the successes of WordStream is that like, you know, I started off doing like a lot of SEO and content marketing and then, then we jumped on like social ads when they, when the prices were really, really cheap, even though I was saying like, Oh, these, <laughs> these, these <laughs> things, things aren't great, but they were, they were still very cheap, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I, I, I'm like a number, number seven most popular author on medium. Why it's, it's, it's just because I got started early yeah. and then my name got, got included in, in like this, you know, recommended authors list. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And then yeah. that, you know, because I was there early, you know, that, that yeah. it, it generated a lot of followers. Yeah. You know, so, so like it's, it, it's the, the first mover gets like all the value. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, they get to yeah. like pick out all the low hanging fruits and just like enjoy it for themselves. Yeah. And like they, it just, it's, it, it, this is uh, the best growth marketing channel of, of, of uh, for the next three to five years, in my opinion. So just give it a try. MobileMonkey.com. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, having said that, since you're doing this all over again, uh, how come you chose a market which is so crowded? Like the chatbot industry is so crowded right now. And how do you intend to like stand out from that? You know, the chatbot, there's like a hundred chatbot companies, but do you know how many of them actually have traction? It's like... Very few. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> almost none of them <laughs> like okay. they're, they're really struggling to get people to, to use this stuff um, even even though I'm excited about chatbots um, less than one percent of businesses actually use them okay uh -huh. and, and chatbots been around for three years okay so so nobody's been able to successfully convince the market like the marketers uh, that they should they should use this like you know, people have like, you know, a hundred customers or a thousand customers or a small number, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and so I don't think, I mean, I think it's, it's full of a bunch of crappy, crappy companies, you know, like that, that are going nowhere. Yeah. Um, and, and, and to me, I see that as an opportunity to, to, to actually have a serious business here, um, you know, the, w w with traction. And when I mean, Traction, it's like, you know, MailChimp has something like 20 million businesses using their service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they've been around forever. Yeah, it's, so like, uh, like I, th I think that, you know, if 89% if of businesses are using email marketing, I think that, you know, 20, 30% of, of companies should be using chat marketing uh, in, in the next five years. Um, but uh, I don't, I don't think any company in the market right now is, is, uh, you know, even close to, to, you know, getting, getting to those types of numbers, you know? So Amazing. Uh, it, it, it's, it depends on how you look at it. If, if you just counting the number of vendors, then it's very yeah. crowded. If you're, if you're looking at the market penetration, it's, it's not crowded at all. Perfect. I think I'm rooting for mobile monkey. So, uh, all power for you. So, <laughs> You know what happened like a couple of years ago, I ran a campaign for a uh, Facebook messenger bot and I quickly realized that my potential customers were finding it very difficult to interact with the bot. Like, you know, it's, it, I, I mean, I might as well like go ahead and say that the bot happened to be a slightly more intelligent than the human itself when it comes to interacting with these guys. So that kind of like affected the performance of my campaign. Do you think uh, it is a valid concern for a mobile chat company, a chatbot company like yours to have? So we're really de-emphasizing the chatbot thing. Okay. So a chatbot is like, it's almost like a, like a human assist, like a, uh, like an operator, like a Siri or something yeah. like this. Yeah. And, and um, you know, those are really, uh, you know, pretty new interactions where you have to kind of, yes. you know, press buttons and, yeah. and people aren't, aren't very familiar with that. And so, yeah. you know, the, the use case that we're more focusing on is, is just uh, uh, just like notifications, you know, just, yeah. just uh, like, hey, there's a new blog post. Like mm -hmm. that does, it doesn't require a lot of. That makes like, sense. That makes uh, sense. That particular uh, use case, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and, and then from there, you once as the market kind of 
you know, as, as end users become more familiar with this experience, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, uh, then, then uh, I think that, you know, some of these more, you know, e-commerce or uh, customer service use cases uh, for, for, for chat are, are, are become more interesting. Uh, but, but you're right. Uh, you know, even, even you said it was two years ago that people were confused. Uh, uh, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of people that are still confused. Yeah, uh, um, so, so I, I kind of favor these, these more simplified bot experiences. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, also uh, what I want to ask you is now in the SaaS industry, you were in the SaaS industry, I think SaaS is becoming increasingly uh, competitive uh, in a gender landscape uh, uh, speaking. Uh, I spoke to this about uh, this to Neil Patel also, where he has taken over Suggest and made it free and uh, completely undercut most of the uh, keyword research tools and all the analysis tools out there. Now, do you think, and he mentioned something interesting, it's become SaaS is slowly becoming like a race to the bottom. And it always is someone is around the corner trying to undercut you in terms of pricing and all that. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I know, Neil. He, he was here. We just had lunch the other day. Uh, and he told me about his like race to the bottom theory. Yeah. Uh, and and it, 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 that's sort of true. Um, uh, the, but the, the thing is, like, there's, there's probably a hundred different email marketing vendors, okay? Mm -hmm. But, like, and they all charge less than MailChimp, okay? Yeah. Uh, but yet everyone uses MailChimp. Mm -hmm. um, so why is it that they're able to, you know, charge a premium? Is the product so much better than than you know any other email vendor? Yeah. Uh, and the and the answer is no. Uh, mm -hmm. They're they're comparable. And so you know, basically, what I'm telling you is that there's this notion of brand, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, like uh, as long as you can establish a very valuable kind of memorable inspirational brand mm -hmm. uh, that people know and trust um, then then they're okay with not buying the cheapest one and, and then actually they, they might not even want a free a free product they might prefer to pay you know 50 bucks a month because Makes sense. They, they, they feel safe uh, and and so you know this is true of not just SaaS, like uh, you know like sneakers, like, you know, yeah. like shoes cost like a hundred dollars or $200. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, but you could buy these things for 20 bucks, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense, but, but that, that's how marketing works. People yeah. uh, aren't thinking as logically as I think Neil is thinking that they do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that said, um, the, the, the tools that Neil has produced like Uber suggest, I think are very successful uh, because, but, they weren't they weren't things that people were paying a lot of money for in the first place mm. you, you, you see what i'm saying so i i, yeah, I already no. did, like for my words there back then <laughs> like, yeah. even 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 10 years ago it, yeah. it was it wasn't a yeah. it wasn't a space that people were willing to pay money for so so like mm -hmm. there's certain products i think that are really meant for that kind of free 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 thing uh and, and uh it was definitely identified a few but I, I don't think that holds true for every everything you know yeah so. that makes sense so when it came to wordstream i think one of the most important things that you did really really well was content marketing and uh, how do you think content marketing has changed in 2019 and what do you think people should be looking out for uh so i can tell you a little bit what i'm doing um uh i it it just became content marketing used to be were you could just put in a little bit of effort and you would see success. So it was like participation was, was the key, like, you yeah. know, 10 tweets a week, you know, three LinkedIn posts, two blog posts, then check, you check the box and, and you're good. And then participation points uh, were, that works because um, you just had to be present. You just had to, you had to be there. So when, when they opened Facebook, there was something from you. Yeah. Um, these, these machine learning algorithms on the other hand, like, like, um, on, on Google, like for Rank Brain and for yeah. the newsfeed in, in, in Facebook, they're they're making it more winner take all. Okay, yeah. so so like the algorithms are, you know, if 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 a piece of content doesn't audition well, like if no one's reacting to it, it, it stops showing it, uh, and 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 instead of it, it shows only the content that got you know the most comments and the most likes. You see what I'm saying? Like LinkedIn works the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, so so does YouTube. To, uh, in terms of um, the, the algorithms, um, and, and and so basically, what's happening is um, it's becoming more winner take all. 
um, it, it, you can't just put out a bunch of content and, and hope to see any, any returns because those are basically invisible yeah. unless, unless it crosses kind of a, a, uh, a certain amount of engagement score that, so that it, it gets featured prominently on the search results page and, and in yeah. the YouTube the YouTube uh, results and, and, and the Facebook news feed. And so basically you need to be trying to produce hits, like rather than just doing the, basically what I do is I, I publish something every day. Like we, we publish something every day, uh, but most of those don't go anywhere. Okay. Uh, but when, when you do find one that, that that's doing really well, you then have to go all in on that one story. Stop doing all the other stories that you plan and just write the same story like, you know, a hundred more times and try to really milk the, uh, that, that uh, winning, winning idea for, yeah. for as, long, as long as you can. I call this uh, like unicorn content marketing where you find, yeah. Something, yeah. find something remarkable and you, you, you copy it. Uh, does that make sense? Absolutely makes sense. Now, what would your tip be for someone? Because obviously what you said made a lot of sense. And for someone who's just starting out with content marketing, it might seem a little intimidating to figure out that, you know, oh, oh I can't figure this out. So what, what would you want to say to them? You know, every content marketing success starts with a channel. Like, like, for me, it was like medium or link building, you know, like, you know, Rand Fishkin, he became a YouTube star because he was, he was just doing these, these, Life for Fridays, yeah. these, these things when nobody else was doing it, you know, like, so, so there, and there's a lot of like LinkedIn stars that are, you know, that took advantage mm -hmm. of the, of the algorithm, like, like, and then, and, and just so, so like, there, there's message and then there's channel. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? Like you, you have to come up with something interesting to say, but you also have to kind of lock down at least one distribution point. Like, yeah. and, and um, you know, it's, it's hard. Uh, you, you know, I, uh, I can tell you how I did it. Uh, like <laughs> yeah. in, uh, with, with, with mobile monkey. So yeah. when I start, when I started mobile monkey a, a, a year, a year ago, it was really demoralizing because I used to have like an email list of like 2 million emails or something. Okay. Uh -huh. And that was like, it was really easy. Like I just hit publish and boom, it was like everyone would see it, you know? Um, and then when I sold the business, like I, I have to leave those, those emails behind cause they, they bought them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I started out with just, uh, you know, converting my LinkedIn list, uh, into e an email list. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and then I started bartering, like, like I would do like webinars with partners. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and the part and the partner would would blast their list, and I would blast my little list, and we would generate like a, you know a thousand registrations, and we would share the leads. So mm -hmm. so like it's like it's like doubling up in poker. It's like it's like yeah. you know as the big the bigger my stack got, the the bigger partners I could I could barter with. So yeah. so we've built up this enormous list over the last year mm -hmm. just by you know by kind of bartering, you know. Yeah. Um, um, so so. You, you you have to find both you, you have to find both a message so my message is like oh wow more messaging it's 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 next big thing you gotta try it out and and, and then you need to you have to work on the channel you know like you know we, we publish a lot on linkedin we publish a lot on medium uh, we do a lot of guest blogging we do a lot of chat marketing so you you, you gotta just pick one of those uh and, and really focus on that all right Amazing. So looks like you are a very busy man. Now, my last question to you would be, how do you stay productive like, when you have so many things to do? Uh, so uh, what, what you do is you, you can throw money at the problem. You can throw money at the problem. So uh, I, have, I have two kids. Like one of them was just born like eight months ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other one's four years old. Um, uh, I have a, I have a nanny, like she works like, you know, 10 to 12 yeah. hours a day. You know, that's, that's a big help. Yeah. Um, like, uh, uh, another thing is like, I, s instead of driving to work, I, t I just take Uber. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, be because like driving, you, you, you lose an hour a day yeah. Whereas Uber. It's like, I can do all my emails in, in the car, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so, so just like, it's, it's kind of the realization that your time isn't free. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and that you should be, you know, organizing your life in a way to, to get the support you need to, to, to do the things that you need to do. You know? So, um, 
it's 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 uh that and uh, I don't multitask. I, I I don't multitask. I can only do one thing at a time. Amazing! Oops. I just finished reading this amazing book called The One Thing. Have you read it? No, tell me about it. Yeah, it's exactly the same. What you just mentioned is like the synopsis of that book. You know, it's basically like don't multitask and just focus on the one thing. And like, you know, it actually makes sense. You know, it makes the book to totally makes sense. It, it it drives my wife crazy because I, I just she tells me a lot of things to do and I can't yeah. I, 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 I can't process it. <laughs> it's like everybody's problem. But thank you so much, Larry. It was so nice talking to you in this interview. I think this brings us to the end of the interview. Anything else you want to say to our uh, uh, audience here? A uh, few tips. Anything about Mobile Monkey? Anything you want to? Um, just just. Uh, Look, I'm starting this new thing. Um, I, I'm going to be working on it for at least a decade. Um, you know, just it, there, there's a Mobile Monkey Island uh, on, on Facebook. It's it's like a, a community. Uh, Mobile Monkey Island. Just search for the for the group. Uh, if if you join that group, like you, you can learn about how to use chat marketing and um, uh, and I, I spend a lot of time in there. Like like when I'm in the Uber, I'll, I'll answer questions uh, from, from from the from the group and and um, and, and, and that's, uh, you know, we, we, we'd, we'd love, we'd love to, to work with you guys. Um, so thanks. Thank you so much, Larry. You are very nice. So it was very nice of you that you took out the time to come and talk to me and talk to all of us. We would wish you all the luck for Mobile Monkey. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a massive success for you in the future. Thank you a lot, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thanks.